Hi there, folks. My name's Z, and welcome to episode four of I Don't Know and You Can Too. Have you ever needed batteries for your Roku remote and couldn't find any regardless of how many drawers you dug through? Are you tired of feeding batteries to the little shark that goes doo-doo-doo-doo? Well, today I'm going to make a solution for that. We're going to use some Dollar Tree parts to make a rechargeable battery charger, solar powered. Today's project costs about $6 and involves five of these solar spotlights and one sheet of foam board, which this is about one third I'm using for this project. I've already torn down four of these lights for the parts that I need, which are four batteries, the control board off of one, and four of the battery terminals. And if you need to know how to do that, check out my last video. Other tools that you'll need for this are a straight edge of some kind, a marking pencil, a sharp knife, a Phillips screwdriver, a soldering iron, and a hot glue gun. While collecting these parts, Ensure that you leave two terminals with wires as long as possible, two terminals with short, uh, no wires remaining, and at least one board with all the wires cut as long as possible. And harvest the four batteries. When you get to this part, we're going to be removing the tail section, the spike section, and opening the clamshell for the next step. Once you have the spike removed, you're ready pre to prepare this board for soldering. You're going to want to strip the end off of all of the wires. Now on the lamp this performs the function that when the solar panel is receiving power it turns off the light so that the battery can charge and when the solar panel stops receiving power it turns the light on. We're going to be reusing this so that when the solar panel is charging it charges all of the batteries in the system and when the light kicks on from the solar panel not having uh, light, it will cut the batteries that we're going to be charging out of the system so that the light only runs off of the battery that we have left in the lamp. Once you've stripped your wires, make sure you've identified which wires go to what. On this, the two right here originally went to the battery, the two on this side went to the solar panel, and these two went to the light. The first two that we're going to be soldering back into the light are the two off of the battery and we're going to solder them back to the battery leads. Once the battery wires have been secured take the ones that had come off the solar panel and solder them to the light. At this point the only two wires remaining should be the two that had been going to the light off of the new board. Feed these through the slots at the back and bottom of the unit. Return the light and its lens to place and close the clamshell back up. At this point you should have a light that's put back together that the light turns on, has two wires out the back, and that if you point it towards light, turns off. Next, we're going to begin cutting our craft foam. First, we're going to cut a base that is about 50% wider than the light and maybe 30% longer than the light. I'm probably just going to trace my phone and cut that out as the base because I'm lazy. With the base cut, tilt the light until this line is approximately vertical and cut two triangle pieces to go along here. That should give you two pieces that look about like this. Next, we're going to cut four pieces of foam about the size of the battery and begin constructing the battery box. After these pieces have been cut, cut a crescent out of one side of each. Now that the crescents have been cut, we're going to be lining these back up with the batteries and cutting the back. My previous counts were wrong. You are in fact going to need five of these crescent pieces, not four. Next, line it up on the board like this and mark lines on both ends and leave yourself enough room for a piece on the bottom 
and on the top. Once you mark those lines, cut out your back plate. Once you have the back plate cut, cut a piece about the same length at about the width of a AAA, maybe a little wider. Next, warm up your hot glue gun and apply this piece here. Once this piece is in, beginning at either end, glue in these brackets. While gluing, do not glue the bottom side of the center post. Leave that gap available. Once this has been assembled to this point, trim this center top bar to be equal with the top of the batteries. Next will be our final use of the soldering iron. Flatten the bent section of these leads and solder them together so that they span the distance between these two batteries and the extended leads wire on to the appropriate ends of the outgoing. Once you have these soldered together, make sure to keep these wires apart and wrap these connections so that they don't touch and short the system out. I'm going to cut strips from the label that came off of the stick, and you thought I was serious when I said nobody uses this. Next, cut a top piece the same as the bottom piece. Next, you're going to cut a slit in the middle of the two middle battery slots down to about here. With the slots cut, insert the wired electrodes into the top slots and the two that are solid and together into the bottom so that a spring lines up with a flat and the flat lines up with the spring. Once you've assembled the battery box, it should look something like this. Next, we're going to hot glue the battery box to the light like this. Next, set the light like this on the base and glue the sides in, attaching them to the battery box. That will leave you with a charger that looks like this. There'll be a little bit of a gap between the base on the light side. This side will look nice. I'm going to trim up this edge, cut crescents in here to match the sides, and uh, then I'll talk a little more about this. All right, and with that, the solar battery charger is assembled. Now the way this works is these two here in the middle will actually charge batteries, and these two on the edges are just for storage. And the way you use this, you keep two in the remote, and you keep two in the rack. And when you get that little thing that pops up on your television that tells you, hey, the battery's low on the remote, flip your batteries around in the remote like you do all the time anyway, run over to this device, pull the dead batteries that will be in here out and stick them in the charging slots accordingly and stick this little boy in the sun. It'll take about 10 hours to charge completely. Uh, indirect sunlight. Uh, these battery, the other batteries should hopefully last you until those are the new ones are charged. Once you pull these out of the device and you put the new charge batteries in, don't stick these into the charge slots. You're going to want to stick these into the storage slots. Uh, these are old NICAD style batteries and they're not like the lithium ion. You can't charge them and uncharge them however you like. It damages them. So if you want these to last as long as possible, you want to store them while they're discharged and uh, recharge them, you know, once a year or so. But you can look into all that yourself. Uh, as I always say, uh, you know, I could have made this a little better. I could have sanded the sides, made it look a little more pretty. Um, but I didn't feel like it and it wasn't really necessary. As I always say, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. If you liked uh, what you saw today, why don't you hit that like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Postscript to recording uh, the rest of this video. After taking this out in sunlight and testing the voltage, the panel that came on this one is apparently only outputting 1.2 volts instead of the 2.5. You should probably test your panels and device before assembling the entire thing to check. To fix that in the battery box here, this is very simple. Instead of running the batteries in series, you'll simply want to run them in parallel. 
Um, I'll let you look up how that's done wiring wise instead of what we have here. It's pretty simple. I'm going to revamp this on my own time. I don't think I'm going to put that on video. Uh, but like I said before, uh, catch you on the next one.